First Kings chapter 18, beginning at verse 41. If you have it, shout God's God. And the word of the Lord says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat, and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab said, So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look towards the sea. Hmm. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go back and look again. Hmm. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There is a cloud, as small as a man's hand, rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up and tell Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with, cr with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. When the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor one question. Say, neighbor, neighbor. What, what do you see? That must be the wrong neighbor. Look at somebody else and just ask them a question. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? You may be, you may be seated. This particular message on this morning going to deal with the topic of vision. And I thought it very imperative that at this particular point of the year, as we get ready to head into the second half of this year, that it would be very important that we again begin to remind each other of the vision. I believe that when God calls a pastor he also equips him or her. I believe that when God calls someone to lead a church, especially a church, to shepherd a people, that he equips them with everything that he or she will need to get the job done. I believe that they are given the anointing to handle what, whatever ups may come. I believe that that same anointing is also able to handle whatever downs may come. Of course, we're not ignorant to know that there are some things that we can do that hinder the vision and we bring them upon ourselves. But I firmly believe that that, that, that built in every man or woman of God is the ability to choose right from wrong. Amen. Are you praying with me again? Amen. It's important that as we are, 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 are striving towards the end of 2012 and going into 2013, I, I, it is important that I share vision with this ministry because God gave me a five-year plan. Amen. For this church and I believe that God is quickly working his plan one of the things that I that I pride myself in is that I, I, I constantly seek instruction from God and everything that God asks me to do or tells me to do I do it without regret I do it without hindrance Many a time, some of the things that I'm told to do by God is not popular amongst the people. Come on, let's just be honest. You don't like everything we do here. But nevertheless, it's not my it's not my agenda. Neither is it your agenda. It's 
God's agenda. Or are you praying with me again? And I can remember that when I first began to pastor this church, I almost felt like I was, I shouldn't be here. Uh, because of the way things transpired, I really felt like I shouldn't be here. But then God quickly reminded me, if I didn't want you here, you wouldn't be here. I wish I had somebody in here. And so what the devil meant for evil, God is able to quickly turn it around for good. It might not go on your program, but if it's in line with God's program, come on, help me in here somebody, if you know what I'm talking about. If it's in line with God's program, then we've got to do what God tells us to do. Are you praying with me in here? that I was hesitant on doing because I didn't know how it would be received amongst the people. I, I was more worried about them than I was about him. But I made a conscientious decision in my mind that I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Do I have a witness in here? And I don't mean any harm by this, but if, if you don't come, come. And if you don't go, go. But God will be God in this house. Amen. Amen. To every person there is given, and we talked on this before, to every person there is given an assignment. To every person that is born is born with an assignment. The assignment is God's divine purpose for your life at any given time. For example, my assignment in this season is to Pastor St. James. My for today is to deliver the word. Your assignment is what you have been created to do. Your assignment is what God has commissioned you to accomplish. Now here's what we must understand that every person is given a specific assignment. Because assignments are specific to every individual. And so the question now becomes, what is my assignment? What has God put me here for? Because God always answers a problem with a person. Uh-oh. When there was a problem with sin, God sent a man. By the name of Jesus. Come on, help me in here, somebody. Because every time there's a problem, God answers the problem with a man, with a person. And so the question now becomes, what have I been created to solve? Mm. What is my assignment? Here's the thing, my brothers and sisters, you have to figure out what you have been called to do. Because there are a lot of people that are doing things that they have not been called to do. There are a lot of people that are operating in areas that God has not called them to. So you have to know what you have been called to do. Are you praying with me in here? Watch this. The calling is not enough. The calling is not enough because the Bible plainly says that many are called, but few are chosen. Are you praying with me here? Now, many are called, but few are chosen. Many go and apply, and many get interviewed, but only few get the job. I wish I had somebody that know what I was talking about in here. Now, the way in which you can become chosen, you have to seek God for his wisdom and his instruction in your assignment. Yeah. Are you praying with me? Yeah. In other words, I ran into some people that they, 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 they are operating in somebody else's assignment just because what somebody else is doing looks yeah. more attractive than what they've been called to do. Yeah. I wish I had some witnesses in here. But your responsibility is not to, to operate in someone else's assignment because watch this you can do what I'm doing but if you haven't been commissioned by God to do it it'll work for me but it won't work for you are you praying with me here as a matter of fact I've seen some people that try to become a carbon copy of other people I've, I've seen it as far as some people that, listen they'll go to a certain place and 
and they'll hear a certain song sung, and that song will wipe out the church. <laughs> well, guess what they sing the next Sunday at their church? <laughs> the same song, but it won't have the different effect. It won't have the same effect because, listen, you have to see God for what He wants you to do. <laughs> Are you praying with me? And so every person has been given an assignment. Every person has a commission. Every purpose in which God has created them. Mm -hmm. Somebody say assignment. Mm. Now, the blessing, we've talked on this before, the blessing is not the cause. Yeah. Blessing is not money. Yeah. Blessing is not the house or the clothes. Yeah. Because how many of you know you can have cars, houses, clothes, money, and still not be blessed?
and the gift is that. Will you be happy? Watch this. If I give you a gift to put in your house, but your house has no electricity, <laughs> then now all you have is a gift with no power. Oh. Oh, somebody missed that idea. You see, there are many of us who have gifts, yeah. but if you don't plug your gift into the power source, yeah. all you have is a gift with no power. Do I have a here? Yeah. I, I know a lot of a lot of people that can sing. I know a lot of people that can that can do all kinds of things, but because they're doing it for the world, come on, help me in here, somebody. What vision? 
vision that you have for your life. Uh -huh. Sister Springs just graduated. What vision do you have for the next four years? When a, when a young person graduates high school, they already know what, some of them already know what they want to major in. They know what they want to be. That's called vision. I want to be a doctor. Well, you're not a doctor when you start, but the vision bridges you from where you are to where you're going. Are you with me? Never catch this, because this is important. I'm giving you principles today. Okay? I'm giving you principles. Never underestimate a person with vision. I'm telling you, if there's a person with vision, you can laugh at them, you can criticize them, you can look down on them, you can talk about them, but a person with vision sees the destination in spite of their situation. Do I have a witness in here? You see, you're looking at where I am, but because I have vision, I where we're going. I, I, I wish I had some witnesses in here. And there are even some people that look down on you and don't want you because of where you are now. Oh, I'll feel this thing in here. There are some people that reject you because of where you are now. And that's why I tell single people all the time, I said, baby, listen, when you're looking for a mate, if you're looking for a husband or you're looking for a wife, don't just ask God to bless you with somebody.
Elijah, the prophet. Elijah, the preacher. Elijah, God's man. Elijah, a man on a mission. Elijah, a man with an assignment. There's no formal introduction of Elijah. In the Old Testament, when a character is introduced, they tell you who their daddy was, their daddy's daddy, their daddy's daddy's daddy, their daddy's 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 daddy. They tell you a whole line of, of who these people were, and then they introduce you to the character. Elijah just shows up. <laughs> He just shows up out of nowhere. The only thing verse 17, verse 16 says, I mean, chapter 16 says about Elijah is that he's a Tishbite. He shows up and he preaches a sermon to Ahab and then he leaves. He walks up to the king. Now watch this. I mean, check, check, check out the swagger that he has. He, 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 he walks up to the king. He says, King, you've never seen me before. I don't know you, you don't know me, but God said it's not going to rain over here anymore until I say so. <laughs> See, there will be a drought in the land until I say so. <laughs> and then he walks off. That cold. I, I love Elijah because he just he walks up, he says what he has to say, he does what God tells him to do, and then he walks off. So cool. And then when he walks off, God senses that 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 he you know he's cool and he's calm and he's collective. So God says, Now I want you to go and you're gonna live by the brook. And and Elijah says, Well, well how am I eat? What am I drink? God says, don't worry about that. I'm going to send you room service. <laughs> a bird flies in in the morning and brings him meat. Come on, somebody. And then in the afternoon, a bird flies in and brings him dinner. How many of you know that when you have vision and you do what God is calling you to do, he'll take care of the rest. Watch this. Here's the principle. Because if God gives you vision, he also gives you the provision. <laughs> Ooh, y'all getting some principles today. He says, now why was there a drought, Pastor? There was a drought because the children of Israel were now between two opinions. Some of them said that God was God, and some of them worshipped Baal. Some of them uh, were, were with Jehovah God on, on Sunday, but they were with Baal from Monday to Saturday. Some of them were holier than thou on Sunday, but from Monday through Saturday they were hellish. Some of them were part-time Christians. Some of them were using God for a one night stand. God said enough of this. He says if you're going to worship other gods, if you're going to flirt with other gods, then I'm going to cut you off. There will be no water until God sends a drought in the land. There's one thing, my brothers and sisters, that I've learned about pastoring in these short three year, years is that sometimes you have to preach when people want to hear Sometimes you have to preach when people don't want to hear you. Sometimes you have to say things that will break people's heart. But you have to say them because God commands it. Sometimes you literally, Minister Ferguson can help me with this, you literally see demons in the pews. Rolling their eyes at you. You realize 
that they woke up this morning with one intention in mind. And that is to show up and throw you off your game. But you got to preach in the game. Now where our text takes off, Elijah, and I'm getting ready to close, I'm, I'm almost done here. Elijah has just defeated 450 prophets of Baal. We all know the story. God rained down fire from, from heaven onto the altar, and Elijah was able to successfully kill 450 prophets of Baal. Watch this, somebody shout vision. <laughs> Now, Elijah, in verse 41, where our text begins, Elijah, now, he hears something. He hears something. Now, now this, is for, this, is, this is a little leadership teaching here. In verse 41, the Bible says, Then Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. There is the sound of the abundance of rain. Here, here's my leadership principle here. Sometimes you're going to hear something before you see something. The difference comes in where you have to be careful whose voice you're listening to. Because look at what he says. He says, there is a sound of the abundance of rain. But scripture tells us that there's not a cloud in sight. Hmm. And so he heard something. Now watch this. He heard something that nobody else heard. That's a principle for you leaders. Because you have, to, you have to understand that when God is going to give you vision, when God is going to show you something, if you're in leadership, God is going to show you something. He's going to let you hear something. He's going to let you see something that nobody else sees. <clears throat> and that's why you have to be firm in your relationship with God. Because if, if you're not firm in knowing that you heard God, people will distract you. He trusted his relationship with God. He said, there is the sound of the abundance of rain. And you have to know in your heart, brothers and sisters, that you heard a sound. Uh -huh. Not the sound of people. Not distraction. Not the sound of fussing and fighting and gossiping. Yeah. You have to know, know that you heard the sound of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Are you praying with me in here? Yeah. There are sometimes, listen, I know that there are sometimes when you feel discouraged, there are sometimes when you feel like giving up your position because what, what, what the situation looks like is not what God showed you. But you have to make sure that just because you're in a, a, a specific spot right now, you have to make sure that your vision is, you know, that you're connected with vision to what God showed you. And this is not just leadership in the church. This is even leadership in your house. This is how to run your life. Yes, I may not have everything I need now, but through vision, I'm still connected to what God showed me. Am I helping you in here? When hell is breaking loose, when calamity and destruction, you have to learn how to be still, and God will give you a sound. What God shows you sometimes may sound crazy. Because God, watch this. God will show you rain in the middle of a drought. <laughs> God will show you the abundance of rain in the middle of a drought. And God's going to show you some things. And you're going to look at this circumstance and situation around you. And you're going to scratch your head because you're going to wonder, how is this going to happen? I'll be honest with you, when God began to show me the things that he wants to do through this ministry, and when God began to show me uh, uh, buildings coming up, and when God began to show me people coming in, and when God began to show me new cars and vehicles parked out, when God began to show me all of these things and prosperity falling upon these people, I said, how that going to happen? All right. The devil comes to make you think that what you 
you saw is not real. Yes, yes. You have to be so confident in what God showed you that it doesn't matter who supports you or who does not support you. Right, come on, I'm going for that. You have to be so confident in what God showed you that it doesn't matter who tells you that it shouldn't be that way. If you know that you know that you know that God showed you, you have to be willing to stand if you have to stand by yourself. Because watch this, if, they, if you have good followers, a good follower may not understand your vision, but they're going to trust the God in you. I'm going to skip over some things because I need to get to these principles. But look at what he says. He says, he told Ahab, he says, go, go eat and drink. Go eat and drink. He sent Ahab to go and eat and drink and prepare because he said there's a sound of the abundance of rain. Watch this. Then he goes and he prays again because he wants to make sure that he's hearing from God. And as he's praying, one of his supporters, one of his deacons, one of his followers comes to him. And he says, Elijah tells him, I want you to go and look over the ocean. Go and look over the water and tell me what you see. So the servant went, looked in the sky. He went back to Elijah and said, Master, what? I don't see nothing. I don't see what you see. So you know what the pastor says? <laughs> Go back and look again. <laughs> All right. He goes back. He looks. He goes back. Hey, hey pastor. Excuse me, I know you're praying, but uh, that vision, I don't see it. Go back and look again. by somebody's house and he, he starts gossiping about Pastor. <laughs> I think Pastor lost his mind. <laughs> oh yeah, because we do that. Oh, we make a Sunday dinner out of church people. <laughs> we barbecue the pastor. <laughs> we fry the first lady. Elijah says, that's all I need. 
You see, because many of us in leadership, we're waiting on something big to happen. <laughs> and God is saying something small. All they need is a sign. He says, Go and tell Ahab to pack his stuff and get going. Because if he doesn't leave now, that hill cloud is going to turn into something big. And watch this. This this messed me up when I read this. He says, if 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 it turns into something big and it rains enough, his his horses and buggies are going to get bogged down. <clears throat> what are you saying, Pastor? The pastor said. It's important that we don't stop and keep moving. Even though we see something little, we have to keep moving because when it gets big, if you're not careful, you can get stuck in what you pray for. Uh-huh. <coughs> pray for rain. Now he sends rain and you get stuck in it. You gotta be careful what you're praying for. And if you're if you're not connected to your goal through vision, then you won't be able to tread when it starts raining. Are you with me in here? And so look at what happened. They packed up their horses and buggies and, and now there's a whole bunch of people there and, and they start moving. And then the, the, the cloud that was the size of a hand, it started to grow and grow and grow. And then the Bible says, it turned into a cloud of darkness. And the entire sky was dark. And it rained with abundance. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, as I close this little message. What has God shown you for your life? What is the vision for your life? Is it over for you? Many of you have just ended a certain chapter in your life. Is that the last chapter? Or is there more? I hear some people say, oh, I'm too old to do this. I'm too old. Listen, if God was through with you, yeah. you'd be known. Oh, yeah. So because you're still here, yeah. Yeah. you still have work to do. Yeah. It may not be the great big work that you once were able to do. Yeah. <clears throat> but he's got something for you to do. There is some person with some problem that you have the answer for. Everyone stand on your feet. Here's another principle that I skipped that I think was very important. I want you to notice, and I did I did that little illustration to be humorous. And I just, I, I read between the lines because I know that this man didn't just go back seven times and not complain. He at least complained to himself. I will. Yeah. I will. But the point is, in this illustration, is that no matter how many times the pastor said go, he was obedient. No matter how many times the leader said go, and no matter how many times he came back unsuccessful, the leader was brave enough to send him back. What are you saying here, Pastor? What I'm telling you is, you have to learn in your life how to surround yourself with people that will support your vision. If you're hanging with somebody that's not going anywhere, guess where you're going? Nowhere. No, I can't. No, I can't. 
if you're, if you're, if, if, if the people that you surround yourself with are in a constant cycle, you guess where you're going? In circles. I tell my children all the time, don't be a follower. Be a leader. I tell them all the time, don't stick out, stand out. There's a difference between sticking out and standing out. When you do things to call, cause attention to yourself, then that's sticking out. Then you look foolish. But when you do things that nobody else is doing, and bring positive attention to yourself, that's standing out. Are you sticking out or standing out? Are you surrounded with people that support your vision? Many of you want to go back to school. Many of you are back in school. Have you surrounded yourself with people that support you? People that back you up? Or do you get home every day and hear complaints? People that don't support your vision. Many of you are, 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 are tempted to move on on your job. Move on on your job. God is showing you something else, something else, another area that he wants you to work in. But you hear people saying, oh, economy is bad, you better stay where you are. Be blessed to have a job. Don't you know that if God gave you a vision, he's going to make the provision? And I'm stepping on my own toes right now. Everyone bow your heads. Father, I'm, I'm grateful that you have loved us enough to speak to us today. That you have loved us enough to encourage us today. You, O oh God, have loved us enough to send your word. To give us instruction. To remind us of vision. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. And as we have heard this word today, a vision will come forth. Those that have no vision for their life, God, give them vision. Those that don't know which way to turn, those that have no direction, give them direction. So that our lives will be successful, not by man's standard, but by your standards. Because by man's standard, successful is what we have. Yeah. But by your standard, successful is if we complete our assignments. Yes, Touch us. Strengthen right us. Yes, Some of us, God, are in sinking sand. Yes, we don't know which way to turn. Yes, we see ourselves in a spiral, yes, in a cycle. Yes, Encountering the same thing over and over again. Give us direction. Give us the boldness to step out on table. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God